Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back. I really do hope that you're uh, finding my weekly analysis useful and implementing it, you know, my analysis into your own trading and finding uh, some success. So, um, we normally start off with a bit of fundamentals first and if you want to know about fundamentals um, and really you can't trade or you can trade supply and demand without fundamentals but my advice would be to uh, try to implement fundamental analysis and determine value um, because supply and demand goes hand in hand with value um, and we determine a currency's strength or weakness on fundamentals you can go to the fundamental analysis course uh, the link is in the description box below and I go over how I approach fundamental analysis trading uh, and you can see the videos here and uh, pretty much um, just my approach from a top down um, perspective right so this week before we get into the technicals because fundamentals is what drives technicals um, the week ahead um, is going to be, you know, the US will publish inflation data. That's very important uh, because that will determine the Federal Reserve's policy on hike, hold, or cut. If obviously inflation is growing, then uh, they 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 will probably continue in their hike cycle, which means that uh, dollar strength, if it's as expected, then holding. If it's below, then you might start hearing, um, you know potential um, maybe rumors of a rate cut depending on how far below um, you know the inflation rate is but um, yeah we've got retail sales um, industrial production and the preliminary reading of Michigan consumer sentiment elsewhere UK Germany and Japan fourth quarter GDP growth rates that's going to be important um, for all of them Germany uh, obviously for is the powerhouse for Europe so um, you know Germany leads if Germany starts to slump you know, uh, then pretty much the rest of Europe is um, is not going to do, you know, going to fare too well. Um, Japan, fourth quarter GDP growth in UK, obviously, um, you're going to see the effects of potential Brexit on uh, UK growth. Um, and China foreign trade, inflation and producer prices, uh, that's again quite important. Um, investors will also react to US-China trade talks and we'll see if the impasse over border security funding can be solved in the US Congress to avoid a second pass, a second partial shutdown. So there's a lot of um, important news going on this week. So definitely something to keep your eye on when making your, uh, your trading decisions. So let's get on to the charts, right? So we all start off as we do uh, with the Dow Jones dollar index so um, this is last week's analysis <clears throat> last week's analysis um, you know I was expecting prices to you know at least come up to here um, some dollar strength to come into the market and as such we actually you know exceeded you know the expectation I was expecting some dollar strength um, when you think about the euro and you think about the pound and the yen and what they're going through at the moment um, you know the dollar isn't anywhere near as bad as uh, as them so uh, I was expecting some dollar strength and of course this happens in the dollar basically Dow Jones dollar index is just a measure of the dollar strength against the major currencies like the pound the euro and the yen um, so you can see obviously uh, you know dollar strength and this is something to keep your eye on when trading any dollar crosses so we did come down into this level of um, of fresh demand you can see there was a fresh level of demand that led to a new high so I was expecting prices to come down here and bounce off and that's pretty much what happened so let's go to the charts now to see uh, what we can see and uh, sorry one sec here we go so dollar Dow Jones dollar index so what have we got now we've taken out that level of supply which was right here there was a level of supply here on the chart but we've taken it out so that obviously gets deleted <coughs> and uh, we've come up into this level of supply now I'm gonna keep this here for now 
right i'm gonna keep this level of supply here for now and uh, the reason why is because we haven't touched the level above yet right and this could potentially be and it wouldn't necessarily you know happen on or it could happen on the dow jones dollar index but obviously we don't trade it but this could still see a reversal this could just be you know some sort of stop hunt above that level i want to see it really kind of clear and go into this higher level of supply so i'm going to keep this supply here and uh, i think the demand zone is pretty much going to stay uh where it is you could potentially just move it further down in fact i think i will so demand starting from here and then just basically encompassing the low right here so um supply and demand if prices do come up to this level of uh, supply then I'll just you know take that off for next week and again if you want to be a buyer of the dollar what you're looking for is demand zones and at the moment we haven't you know you wait for price to really come all the way back down to here before looking at um, a buying opportunity from a sell from a selling opportunity you could still see prices from here start to sell off so if you do start to see maybe some negative candles um, coming back into this supply zone then we could obviously you know look for sell trades on any of the other dollar crosses if prices do come up again you're looking at that as your first pretty opportunity to get short and there will be probably another level of some support and resistance within this supply zone here so i think probably if we're just looking at all the uh levels resistance 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 bit of choppiness but then resistance 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 so within this supply you've got an area of resistance which is what we look for and you have these wide zones of um of supply or demand and just look to get short because it adds to the supply and demand equation so who is likely to be taking profit who's likely to be selling at this area here right so um that's going to be the dow jones dollar index for this week and again keeping keep an eye on the uh, fundamentals inflation um if inflation comes out worse than expected then definitely you know this could be a shorting opportunity on the other dollar pairs so um now looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen right from last week just zoom in a little bit from last week this is what we saw and into this week come on loading new bars there we go finally <clears throat> we did have prices come up here and this supply zone really kind of hold as well so um Again, um, I was looking at probably a buying opportunity, but didn't manage to get in on the uh, on the dollar um, yen uh, for this week. So let's look at the dollar yen uh, chart. So again, we just touched the top end of this um, this demand zone, right? I'm looking for a bit of a pullback, but obviously prices haven't done so we have taken out or say taken out but we have made a new high so um this is where we'd be drawing some demand as well right here all right so what you want to see is if you look down maybe on an intraday time frame you'll see some sort of support and resistance within that zone let's go down to something like the four hour right, let's take that you'll be able to see some sort of support and resistance you've got support resistance 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 bit of support just a bit of a breakthrough there um not necessarily the clearest level on a lower time frame but you may want to look for any kind of buying opportunities if prices do come back down into this zone on a lower time frame before looking to get long be careful again if risk off comes into the market and the, the yen is a beneficiary of risk sorry risk off uh sentiment all right then you would probably be continuing if you did get in short here you're looking for any uh continuation to the downside um this level is okay or if that level basically that demand level fails then be looking for 
that area to look for any long trade same thing if you're looking for a short trade you've got this supply zone here to look for any shorts if you're not short already right here um, so moving on to the Swiss franc dollar Swiss and uh, I didn't update I haven't updated since the 27th of January because we really haven't had any movement um, nothing really changed <clears throat> until this week so this week we did create a new demand zone and we've uh, I would say probably the supply zone um, you know is probably just about gone if we zoom in a little bit <clears throat> right we did you know clear it one two and then we come back down into it but um, I'm gonna I will get rid of this supply zone here let's go to the charts dollar Swiss so what I'm gonna do is that's gone and there now what we want to do is zoom in a little bit and our supply zone is gonna be sorry our demand zone is gonna be right from from here to here now could you get short right now yet yeah, but um, personally I'd probably rather wait for this level of supply a lot higher right in order to get short if you want to get long on this currency pair then you're looking for a pullback which I I am going to be looking for uh, any kind of demand trades and again just depending on um, fundamentals you know and, and risk sentiment but all in all I want to be uh, um, I'm more bullish on the dollar but I wait for price action to obviously prove that and uh, assess when prices do come down here so those are pretty much your options for this week if prices break down here I like this level here where you've got the confluence of horizontal and diagonal support and resistance this is a nice one right in a level of demand as well so definitely good level um, let's add a level right here you can see where there is confluence of support and resistance within this area you can see resistance support 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 kind of resistance and support around here support so again nice nice setup if you want to be long the dollar right I like this again doesn't mean I'm gonna take this um, you know there's other things that I'm looking for as well um, within this area um, and again it depends on what happens this week from a fundamental perspective so that is the uh, Swiss franc now moving on to the dollar CAD in the dollar CAD uh, this was a decent very good say very good setup but from a technical perspective um, good setup uh, you had some diagonal support in this area here you also had the confluence of horizontal support first and foremost demand which is value in this area and anyone who did get long would have been rewarded from last week come on come on come on load new bars here we go right you can see where price is pretty much reversed from here so great setup um, we've taken out this level of supply so um, on the chart I will take that off um, let's have a look and go to dollar CAD so dollar CAD again taking out this level of supply that was positive obviously bullish dollar right so if you are looking to potentially get long or actually I'll start off with the shorts if you're looking to get short on this pair then just a bit higher before looking for some bearish price action again if you're looking for a buying opportunity You'd be looking for prices to come down here or you'd be looking for higher highs to get made if higher highs do get made and then come back down into what would be created as a demand zone so um, you've pretty much got that again with with um, with the Canadian dollar keep your eye on oil right if oil is bullish 
then very bullish then you may see obviously prices start to you know come down in the dollar sorry the canadian dollar strengthen right but again just uh keep your eye on uh on oil and obviously the dollar index and what's going on so those are your options um let's go to the new zealand dollar us dollar and this week what we had was a bit of a sell-off right so i was expecting prices to just come a bit higher right i thought it was gonna you know stop hunt some people um you know traders but obviously if you did get in on this pin bar well done to you <coughs> top of the supply zone um I did want to get short on this, but it just didn't come up to the to the area that I was expecting. And plus I was in a few other dollar trades as well. So I didn't want to overload. But if I did see, you know, some sort of stop hunt, then I probably would have, uh, you know, entered another small position on this currency pair. But we've taken out this demand zone here, even with the confluence. Um, and again, um, there was some, I think some New Zealand news, which wasn't fantastic. So we've taken out a couple of levels. So what we can do is just go to the charts and clean it up a bit now we'll get rid of that get rid of that get rid of that and we're taking out that level of demand and i'm gonna delete that as well so we're right into this overall daily level of demand here which has been used as support support resistance support and uh, all support and resistance is is past supply and demand zones that have been projected into the future this is a demand zone this would be a supply zone this is a demand zone this is a demand zone right so it's just been past supply and demands that have been projected into the future so if we do see some weakness on the dollar right right now is a decent definitely a decent buy if you're looking to buy the new zealand dollar if you're looking to buy the the uh, US dollar then that's going to be your next supply zone unless prices make lower highs and lower lows so you might see a bit of a bullish candle and then you see a bearish move that continues lower and then this would be the area of supply um, also a decent area where we've got um, some horizontal support and resistance and in fact i don't know why i'll probably draw it from here yeah that's where that's really where the uh, the level is i don't know why it was like that before but you want to join the lows etc so probably maybe, maybe the, the better area to maybe get long is, is if you see prices chop around and price come up come down into this area here but either way if you think that the uh, new zealand dollar is going to strengthen then now is your opportunity to potentially get long moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar let's uh, have a look at the charts zoom in a little bit and this is uh, I mean I'm actually in this trade short and loading new bars here we go All right so again traders last week there was a buying opportunity around here but again why the question i always ask is why are you buying the pound when you know there's so much uncertainty around brexit so taking out that demand zone right there was no value around here and now we've come down into this demand zone here right um and we're putting in we don't know whether this is profit taking or reversal i would probably say depending on what happens this week there might be probably just a um you know profit taking going on into the end of the week so let's go to the charts and let's have a look at the uh the pound and so what we want to do is get rid of that get rid of this and this and what we've actually done as well is we've touched this lower area of demand so what i'm going to do is just clean up the charts a little bit yeah and uh get rid of that as well and then what we want to do is going to be the area of supply that if prices do come into i do want to look to get long sorry look to get long or well, long dollar anyway uh and short the british pound um as far as a level of confluence 
of support and resistance in that area you do have a little bit it's not fantastic but it is there it is there got support support bit of support here bit of support here there there so around this area decent level to try and potentially get short if you're looking to get long these are pretty much going to be your your areas right now to get long either there or there we also have this wider demand zone right here and again when you get wide demand zones you just look for some confluences within those areas of demand so you're going to have support there support there and if you don't see anything maybe on the on the higher time frame just zoom down into the lower time frame like the four hour to look to see if you see some four hour support and resistances within these areas these daily areas of of demand or supply right um so that's pretty much your uh your analysis for the pound dollar moving on to euro dollar euro dollar i took profit this week on this trade um I managed to get in around here i think i showed you the entry in a trade last week I took profit on on friday um and i'll show you exactly why i took profit in fact i'll just tell you pretty much from here is that you've had one two three four five days of selling right into a level um of what is known as you know obviously demand but you've also got support 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 there um and i'm expecting pretty much just a pullback before prices start to move lower so when you see that um before i just take profit my my overall target was actually at the lows but i'm expecting a pullback and then hopefully i can get you know an entry at some point and then just re-enter on the trade so let's go to the euro dollar so we took out this level of demand as there was no demand there that gets deleted and uh, I'll go down to the four hour time frame just to show you you can check last week's uh, weekly video as well um, that was the uh, the entry right here nice risk reward I think about a four to one on the trade stop just above the high a few pips above the high and uh, profit was around the lows right here on the Friday so it worked out to be a nice four to one trade again why um, was because if you look at Europe and you look at the dollar which one uh, is faring better uh, and that's again it's a question for you to answer um, but again looking at you've had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve bearish candles into a level for me, I have to expect some sort of pullback. Whether I get it or not, I might be wrong, it's fine. But when you get so many bearish, consecutive bearish candles or, you know, in, in, in a certain, you know, in, in a direction, you have to expect something to kind of pull back and then maybe continue lower. Then what you would do is just look for, you know, trading opportunities within that level of created supply. If you do get it, uh nope definitely don't want to do that um so let me just go back a bit go back to the daily time frame chart so i am expecting a bit of a pullback if prices do continue lower so be it but if you do want to be a buyer of the euro um just be aware that this is not the freshest area of demand you've been it's been touched once twice three times four times i do expect this to break to be fair but again i was expecting maybe a bit of a pullback before it starts to break lower right but um just keep in mind that this is going to be a problem area um you know for uh for potentially for the dollar right to really break through straight away again if the euro um you know is some positive sentiment or positive fundamental news then this could be a decent trade to the upside again if you're looking to trade this um to the downside you've got another bit of another supply zone right there 
but again just look for fresh areas of supply so even though there is a supply zone here in price there's blatantly supply there is that the freshest area of supply i'd probably say higher up would be the best better area or higher still right so um those are pretty much your options for the euro dollar looking at the euro yen let's zoom in a little bit this pair i haven't really been looking at technically it's not necessarily the greatest um but fundamentally and sentiment wise i do expect the closer we get to brexit the yen to strengthen because of the risk um that is associated with it we did have prices you know kind of come up and then come down into this um demand zone now is there demand for the euro at this exchange rate again that's something that you'll have to decide for yourselves um but from a technical perspective there is a decent buy trade if we you know prices do come down you've got the confluence of you know some support in this area we do ha also have supply right here right as we've kind of you know gone below this previous higher higher low right so you've got a swing here and then you've got prices have gone closed below that low so i'd put this as an as a as an area of of supply so from a buying perspective right now anywhere right now if you go down a lower time frame would be decent buy and again if you're looking at a sell trade your first you know area to try and look for a short trade would be there you also have the confluence of support turned to resistance so this little area of, of support turn resistance into an area of potential value as well so that's your euro yen trade and again if one of those levels breaks it's just looking for you know the higher level if you're you know convinced that the japanese yen is going to get stronger against the euro so moving on to the australian dollar us dollar and again load bars we've created now i did want prices to come up into this area of supply which it didn't but it created a new area of supply took out this uh, demand here so on the charts we've got an area of supply right here we've kind of put in a little pin bar at this area of demand so going to the charts what we can do is take that out take that out and then Again, if you believe in dollar weakness or Aussie strength, uh, US, US weakness, Aussie strength, then this is a potential buying opportunity in this area of demand. If you're looking at a short trade, which I will be, then waiting for maybe a pullback into this area of supply here before looking to get short. If that level of demand fails, then you've got another level right here to look for demand right and again same thing would be up here this level of supply doesn't actually work out all right so those are your areas of supply and demand um do we also have a level of yeah, we've got a bit of a level of support and resistance within that supply and demand zone you can see on the underside yep right there support resistance resistance support bit of resistance and support there yeah so just on the underside of this just move it up a little bit more something like that again decent area with some confluence here adding to the supply and demand equation um so yeah i think that's it for the aussie dollar and finally we have the australian dollar japanese yen so again looking forward from last week we did get a bit of a sell-off at this um zero point um so zero eight eight eighty point uh uh even number round number so um we have come down into this level of 
demand. So let's actually uh, go to the charts. And let's zoom in a little bit more. So what we've got level of demand come down to the lower lower area. Um, so we could be looking at a buy trade right now on the lower time frame chart. We have created a bit of a supply zone. right here so if prices again come up to this area of supply then this is where you want to look to get short the next level of supply is going to be further up here and again Japanese yen benefits from risk off sentiment so um, again if you start to see China going back to the fundamentals right if China investors will also look to react to uh, China as well China um, trade talks, but also uh, China foreign trade, inflation, and producer prices. That pretty much is like the global um, global engine, right? That keeps um, you know uh, GDP of other nations up. China being the biggest um, you know uh, uh, economy in the world at the moment. Now, if that starts to slow down, then the global economy starts to slow down. If the global economy starts to slow down, then there's you know there's going to be a flight to safe haven money will flow into safe haven plays um and assets like gold um japanese yen being a safe haven currency so um again this is the reason why you look for fundamentals and risk sentiment right when looking at taking certain trades it's not just good enough to uh, look at a technical pattern and say oh that's a level of supply that's a level of demand you know um if you're trading like that um you know, uh, it's uh, you're really at a disadvantage, in my opinion. But um, I could be wrong. But yeah, that's uh, it for this week. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find the analysis useful. The uh, pairs, I should have said it told you at the beginning, but it is time stamped in case you want to go back through your favorite pairs. Um, and uh, again, if you have any questions, just email me at info at trading180.com or you can leave a comment in the section box below. I hope you guys have a great week. Um, thinking of the next uh, video to make. I've got a couple of ideas, but if anyone wants to send anything over, then be my guest. And if I uh, know anything about it, and uh, I will uh, make a video on it. Thank you for, again, I wouldn't say appreciate the guys that have been commenting and supporting as well. Thank you very much. Um, it really does go a long way to, um, you know, getting these videos out there. So uh, thank you again. And um, guys, have a great trading week and uh, take care.